Welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual double mastectomy. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be helping you with this procedure today. A double mastectomy is a surgical procedure that is used to remove both of the breasts as a treatment for breast cancer. If you're not familiar with breast cancer, it's a disease that originates in the inner lining of the breast's milk ducts. With the exception of skin cancer, breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among women in the United States. Scientists and researchers aren't completely sure what causes breast cancer, but they do know that there are certain risk factors that put people at a higher threat of developing the disease than others. These risk factors include age, genetics, personal health history, and diet. Fortunately, there are a number of treatment options available for those diagnosed with breast cancer. These options include surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, hormonal treatments, and holistic medicine. Our patient today was diagnosed with cancerous tumors in both of her breasts. Having tumors in both breasts is rare, but when it does happen, doctors stage each breast independently. According to the patient's records, she has stage 1 breast cancer in her right breast and stage 2 breast cancer in the left. After discussing her family history and health habits, our patient and her doctor have determined that a double mastectomy is the best option for treatment. To begin, we need to get an intravenous line started. This will provide our patient with necessary fluids and medication throughout the surgery. A tourniquet has already been tied around her upper arm. Can you find a suitable vein in the patient's hand? That should work. Sterilize the injection area using a sterile alcohol wipe. Insert the needle and advance the angiocatheter into the vein. The small burst of blood in the angiocatheter hub is what medical professionals refer to as a flashback. This lets us know that the angiocatheter is correctly positioned in the patient's vein. Now I'll release the tourniquet. While placing a small amount of pressure over the vein to collapse it, remove the needle. This will reduce the amount of blood that may discharge out of the angiocatheter when the needle is removed. Now that the needle has been removed, I'll dispose of it in a sharps container. Lastly, we need to secure the IV with tape and test the line. For those with a weak stomach or have children in the room, I need to let you know that the next few steps get a bit graphic and contain nudity. This procedure may not be appropriate for work or school environments. Click the Continue button when ready. Next, we'll use a chemical antiseptic known as chlorhexidine to cleanse the patient's skin. Use the applicator to apply the chlorhexidine to the surgical site. We're off to a great start. Today, we'll be giving our patient a general anesthetic using a face mask. Once the patient begins breathing in the anesthetic gas, her bloodstream will carry the gas to her brain, preventing her body's nerves from communicating with it. This will allow her to be completely asleep and free of pain during the surgery. Place the mask over the patient's nose and mouth. Once it's in position, I'll turn on the anesthetic gas. Now that our patient is unconscious, we'll insert an endotracheal tube into her mouth and down into the windpipe. This will help her breathe and provide a constant mixture of oxygen and anesthetic gases during surgery. Use the pen to sketch where we'll be making our incisions. Grab your scalpel and make the incisions in the patient's right breast. This will give us access to remove the tumor and breast tissue.
Remove the tumor and breast tissue using forceps. The electrocautery device will separate the tumor and tissue from the chest. Great. I'll send this to our pathology lab for examination. In the meantime, we need to insert what is known as a Jackson Pratt drain. This will prevent excess fluid from building up on the chest wall through constant suction. When you're finished, suture the wound. That was flawless. Now let's do the same thing to the left breast. Right on. That's coming along nicely. Keep it up. Couldn't have done it better myself. After a double mastectomy, most patients will need to stay in the hospital from one to seven days, depending on the complexity of the surgery, complications, and if any breast reconstruction is performed. While in the hospital, patients are taught various exercises that will help avoid arm and shoulder stiffness. These same exercises may also prevent the development of significant scar tissue. It is highly likely that physical therapy will be required as part of patient's recovery. Patients are also provided detailed guidelines before leaving the hospital. They may include proper care of the surgical wound, post-surgical care while at home, and the treatment of future scarring. Remember, a double mastectomy is a major surgical procedure and recovering from one may be emotionally tough. Advice that physicians may offer patients to help them recover emotionally may include Finding someone that's had a double mastectomy for emotional support. You may find that this person is more helpful than any book or video. Be optimistic. Researchers have found that optimism can not only improve the speed of recovery, but it could improve everyday health as well. Give therapy a chance. This includes participating in individual and group sessions to discuss your experience, challenges, and successes. Do what you love. Don't let a double mastectomy keep you from doing the things you enjoy doing before the surgery. And that's a double mastectomy. If you found the surgery educational, share it with a friend. And if you're up to it, check out another procedure on surgerysquad.com.